Now, it's that time again when we recruit some help to consider some of the more interesting talking points of the week. Joining us for this Friday, Confab are Ed Gannon, editor of the Weekly Times and musician Ella Hooper. Uh, we've just heard in the in last five minutes or so that uh, the 12-year-old boy who was shot in Cleveland by that police officer thinking that he had a real gun, he had a toy gun, the judge is basically recommending that he should be charged with murder. This story making a lot of news this Shocking week. Shocking turn of events and that feeds into our discussion this morning about toy guns after the uh, publication of that photo of the young boy in mm. Martin Place in Sydney carrying what looked like to be a, a very realistic it's terrifying. toy gun. Um, a debate over toy guns. Should they be banned in your view, Ella? Look, I've never been a fan of guns, toy guns, any kind of guns, but I think <clears throat> unfortunately kids are going to want to play with toy guns. It's ingrained, it's part of the culture. I know that my brother and I, we had to, we weren't given toy guns, but we made them out of other things. If you're going to make weapons, we made bow and arrows, we made, you know, slingshots, we made shanghais, and yeah, if we were going to make a gun, it was more like a stick gun. I don't see why such a realistic, frighteningly, um, you know, realistic gun needs to be on the, on the market as a toy. I think that's really dangerous and dumb, and I think it's... I also think it robs us of our imaginations as kids. Like, why can't we fill in the blanks as kids? Why can't we, you know, use our imaginations to create toys? But yeah, we know that might be a violent type of toy, but that's just doing all the work for them. It's yeah. terrifyingly real, and I would have freaked out myself seeing that walking down Martin Place. Absolutely. Ed? Uh, the issue with this um, story is, is, is the outrage about the fact that um, the boy was carrying this gun where he was, yep. near the Lint Cafe, but also too in the street. And that's what... And if, if he had been in the backyard and had taken a photo... I mean, A, would the photo have been taken mm. and B, would anyone have cared? I mean, mm. it's a huge, I mean, I agree that the sorts, sorts of guns yeah. is, is quite weird. Yeah. I think it's a parental question, yeah. totally. whether yeah. you should have been allowed to do that in that spot, but yeah. uh, take it to, you know, to boys and girls playing cowboys and Indians in yeah. the backyard. Yeah, interesting. Um, I was in uh, China about three weeks ago and I was in Beijing and I was, I was, there's a eight, better, probably an eight-year-old boy <coughs> on rollerblades and he, he was um, in the main street of the, like right in the middle of town and he had a gun exactly like that. And mm. I just looked at him and thought, Gee, that's really bizarre. You just don't see that in Australia. It really struck me at the time is the sort of thing you don't see in Australia. It really stood out. And then yeah. this turns up yeah. yesterday. And the story that it links back to is just so tragic with that kid being shot. And I think it's interesting that that is now going to come to trial because the more I heard about that, the more I thought, what a terrible, weird story. Yeah. He wasn't mm. allowed CPR. His younger sister was pulled away from saying, it's just a toy, it's just a toy. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a really horrible situation in that case so I think we should find out more about it. Reality check. Yeah. Let's move on to uh, Joe Hockey and housing making a lot of news this week his comments there Ed. <laughs> he's, um, he's great at um, making headlines for comments he makes. I thought it was a it? joke I was like is, oh, he, really? is he actually joking? Yeah. It was I mean, so in, the, in the context of what he says it makes sense look you, know, you get a good job and get good money and you'll afford a better house but it was just the political way it was delivered and, and it just, <laughs> just didn't go down very well and uh, I mean it's, of course he feeds into our complete national obsession by We're talking about housing and housing home. prices. And house prices have yeah. been front and centre again. The median house price in Sydney is expected to hit one million very oh, shortly. And it's turned the conversation, especially to young people, Ella, who may have uh, coveted owning a house, a block of land at some stage. They're now consigning uh, their ambitions to being renters. Yeah, and look, I think that that dream is, is of a generation just past. I think we've given up. Honestly, we've given up. It's, it is too hard. I mean, lots of my friends are in the creative industry as well, and we don't make a certain amount of money each year. It's mm. not very reliable. And that, that Aussie dream of owning a home, like the dream is out of whack with the reality. The reality Absolutely. has yeah. completely changed. Unless you have uh, money coming in from parents or you know wealthy family or some other magical source, the dream has changed. I think we are looking at renting. And I know a lot of 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds who are renting too because it's just out of reach. Do we need to rediscuss what the Aussie dream is then? Do we need to sort of well, regenerate uh, that conversation? I think we should. I'm just, just thinking as Ella was saying, that is, you know, the, the land of the developer where they buy the blocks and they'll split <coughs> it and put two homes there. I mean, eventually they're, they're going to hope that someone buys them and, and you know, if, it, if we get to a stage, a generation, and no one's going to be buying houses and, and everyone's buying investment properties, I mean, it's, it's going to conk out at some stage. Yeah. That's the point. And I see lots of family tension coming up because increasingly kids, in, or not so much kids in their 20s and 30s are staying at home mm -hmm. and perhaps buying an investment property, yeah. a, a yeah, unit or apartment somewhere yeah. and oh, come not on, nothing's moving worth out that. of home. Get out kids, nothing's <laughs> worth that. Well, it's been <laughs> seen as them taking re revenge against their baby yeah. boomer parents who have done very well getting into the housing market decades ago and not moving out. Yeah, but I mean the, the issue, are, are we in a bubble? Is, is there, we had a point that... Uh, Do you reckon we are? Something's going to... Oh, you'd think that probably something's going to have to correct at some stage. Mm. I mean if you merely look at the annual income and the multiplier, I think it's about eight times, whereas it's three times probably 10, 20 years ago. It's mm -hmm. eight times. It's getting to the point where just 
that the, the size of the mortgage just, just can't keep going the way it's yeah. going to keep going. So. Well, we're looking at, we're talking about the bubble in, in Sydney, particularly in Melbourne, but what about the broader implications around the country? We sort of haven't had much of a discussion around that this week, but if there is a bubble, if it does burst, what will the impact be rippling out from those two cities? Well, it's, it's almost like a two-speed um, thing where you have this um, almost pressure point in the cities, but outside of the major centres. I mean, you you, you talk about um, Ballarats and Norbury's and Toowoomba's and th th those bigger centres in Wagga and th they would have um, the amount of development that would be happening there. But then you get out to the smaller towns, you just don't see the capital growth in there. No, so it's, no. they're not you're not getting developers building things. No. And the other point is, that is there's a lot of um, empty houses around in um, on farms throughout. Mm. Thousands of empty houses around farms around Australia. And you see towns trying to give away yeah. blocks of land to get people That's... to come and save their schools and things like that. So it's a, it really operates on two complete different levels and not related to all, all of each. That's a very popular technique where I come from. In my yeah. little town in Violet Town, there's lots of empty blocks. And if you take this church building or if you take this schoolhouse, We'll give you the land, and if people are just trying to, you know, move it around. And, is it and working? And if from your yeah, it's town? actually quite good in my little town. There's quite a few people coming in, and I have a lot of friends personally who are thinking, if we are going to buy, we're going to have to go to the country. So it could end up being quite a positive thing for bringing some tree changes back to the country <laughs> towns that are flailing. You know, it could be one way that we get some young people or young families to the country areas. There was actually a story in the Australian, I think, a couple of days ago about a couple who had sold up, moved to Tamworth. I think uh, mm -hmm. they'd given up their jobs and they'd taken up local jobs, of which there were enough. Didn't and have lower their professional yeah. expectations. Lower well their the professional process. expectations. That's always the problem. Yeah. Isn't it? But yeah. what, what happens is that you, you perhaps get to a stage of your life where you you can actually do that. It's the younger ones that are thinking, well, I need to be in the city to, for a job on whatever profession I'm doing. I, I don't have that option of actually moving 300 kilometres away where the older ones do. Well, it then throws the balance out because the younger population are not there, so the schools don't keep going and, and it just creates... And mm. this, is the, this has yeah. been the other difficulty is the reports out this week that there won't be enough uh, nurses, teachers, all Absolutely. those service industries will not... It's sort of a similar thing yeah, happened in can't. Silicon Valley many, many yeah, years ago. Yeah, I mean, the story about in Sydney, that they, where do they... The, the normal people, the normal jobs, um, where do they live? If they can't afford to live in Sydney, they'd be that far away. Time for people, a quick yeah. final topic, the importance of caffeine. <laughs> oh, no, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Well, I've only done that to hey, me. That's me. me feel awkward. I'm just going to this, I, I can't scroll through the barrage of <laughs> primarily uh, dissatisfaction with uh, decaf. Kumi uh, has added herself as a decaf. I have. Sort of woman this morning. I, Ed, are I, you I, shocked I, and horrified? Oh, I am shocked and horrified. Is that, <laughs> and, and is that, How's that for a leading question? <laughs> <laughs> is that a permanent thing or is it just a new thing? Well, it's a permanent thing. I've been doing it for 18 months. I yeah. actually did it when I sailed the city to Hobart and uh, <laughs> I was advised to take myself off caffeine because I wouldn't have it for five days. Oh, that's and true, yeah. It was uh, really tough to go off it, but I haven't gone back. Ella? Well, this is very scary. Yeah, I think I might have to follow in your footsteps because I'm a horrible caffeine addict and it is, it's starting to impact <laughs> my life. <laughs> and you as a breakfast television presenter, you know, I can see myself going in that direction in the future. Do I really want to be up at four making a stove top <laughs> pot of coffee? It's just, yeah, I think you, you might be my new hero and I'm going to go decaffeinate. Excellent. Well, so we, have, <laughs> we have formed a friendship for about five minutes and oh, no, no, no. hasn't been talking it's to been me the rest of the show. I'm all talk at the moment, by the way. Days. No commitment, all talk. <laughs> uh, guess what time it is? It's time for you two to go and make a cup of coffee, Ed. And okay. Sheila, thank you very much for Thanks. kicking Thank around you. the issues. Thanks for popping in. Have a great weekend. Thank you.